Hello, this is Leona Graham. Welcome to another episode of the Rock and Road podcast. Cars, motorcycles and music. This week my car is a Renault Captur Hybrid. I speak to David Coverdale of Whitesnake and formerly of Deep Purple about the reissue of the Whitesnake album Restless Heart, amongst other things... And you can win tickets to Motorcycle Live, the amazing biker event taking place at the NEC Birmingham from the first weekend in December. But first, I'll try out the Renault all-new Captur RS Line E-Tech Hybrid 145 Auto. This is what they like to describe as a compact SUV. Well, this is a rather stylish looking orange car. It's called Desert Orange with a black roof. The lights are done in a kind of C-shape, really nice. They've got like a daytime light on them as well, LED daytime running lights. Two-tone exterior paint, contrasting roof, longitudinal roof bars and um, 18-inch alloy wheels. Inside the car now and it's very dark and moody and compact and a little bit sporty. Um, It's got black bucket seats with red stripes. Even the seat belts have got uh, red edging on them. The air vents have got uh, one bit in red as well, so really following the theme throughout, although I don't know if it goes with the orange on the outside, uh, but absolutely gorgeous inside. What I love about this is it has a dedicated EV button. So when you're driving, you can pop it into EV mode and you've got that extra bit of control. Some of the hybrids choose when to put it in EV and when petrol, but I prefer having the control over it myself so that I can use mostly EV and just a last resort going to the petrol when I have to. Although a couple of occasions I've pressed EV button and it's gone EV not available. I don't really understand why, but wherever possible, I use EV mode. It has a lovely 9.3 inch touch screen with navigation screen right in the middle here with some actual buttons underneath. As I say, the EV button and a couple of others that you might need to quick access. On the steering wheel, we have a dedicated spoke. Um, I'm not sure the proper term for that, but bit that pokes out, especially for the media centre. So you've got the volume and you can adjust what radio station you're on without having to take your hands off the wheel, which is obviously better. Uh, Nice ergonomic feeling gear lever, which fits the whole of the palm of my hand. So quite chunky in that respect. Um, And we have a choice of reverse, neutral, drive and B. Now, the B option is a really good little added extra and it's called B brake mode which is one pedal driving. So it's using the regenerative braking feature that a lot of these cars have now, which means that when you take your foot off the accelerator, it brakes for you automatically. So you barely need to use the actual brake. It's a bit like a go-kart. It's just go, let go, go, if you know what I mean. Very useful for lazy driving. It's got a hands-free key card, so you can just keep the key card in your pocket or bag. Don't need to get it out at all. As you walk near the car, car unlocks. When you get in the car, you just press start. Now, one thing the girls noticed, I took them out out for lunch yesterday. The girls are aged 22 and 18. Jessica was in the front. She's 22. She hit her head getting out of the car because it's quite low. And Rachel was in the back. And as I went round corners, she was complaining that her head was hitting the side. Now, my girls aren't tall. They're only like five foot two. So you have to bear in mind, it's pretty compact in the back. I also went in the back on the way back from the restaurant and my partner drove and my knees were touching the back of the seat in front. Boot space, not that big either. But, you know, if you're using this as a starter car and you haven't got a family and loads of people to carry about, then this is great. Two cup holders in the middle. The gear lever comes out on this like extended arm, uh, which you can put things underneath of as well. Two aux points in the front. Love the dashboard. It has a little avatar of me, a little orange car. And when I indicate, so does the little car on the screen. Love that. Also, on the left-hand side, it tells me what the battery is charged up to. On the right-hand side, it tells me what the petrol is filled up to. So they're separated out. And I find that easier and better to use than some of the other ones I've got with sort of quite a complicated, um, have I got petrol, have I got electric charge system? This is really easily laid out. Do love the screen, especially the radio area, because when I click on my presets, I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five fours of 20. I can see 20, did some maths there out loud. I can see 20 radio stations in one screen. 
so I can just flick between them. Of course, we've preset this to Absolute Radio, Absolute Classic Rock, Absolute Country, Absolute Radio 60s through to Absolute Radio 10s. So most of them on that screen belong to us. Um, then you've got a row of FMs and then a row of medium waves. So less messing about um, when you're driving, if you want to flick between stations, loads to choose from on the presets without having to go to menu, sub menu and another menu to find the radio station you want. Really like this. Sat nav, also really good. I've complained before about cars not having good enough sat nav and then having to use my phone. But this one is up there with the Google Maps. Just taking it out for a quick spin now whilst I'm talking to you. I think it handles really well. Using the regenerative braking, as you come up to the ramps, you just take your foot off the accelerator and it slows down for you. Not too jerkily either. You have to take your foot off some way before the ramp for it to have a chance to slow down. But I'm using the one pedal driving. Suspension is great, handles really well on the corners. This is ideal for a school run, it's really nippy. I'm in EV mode. And it's absolutely lovely. Nice chunky steering wheel as well. Have a look at the photographs at Rock and Road Pod. I do like this actually. Price of this car, well, price as tested, this particular one is 28,200. Recommended retail price, 27,500. It does have a five year, 100,000 mile warranty. So that's pretty decent. All in all, I like this car. If I had to choose between this and the Honda E, I'd go for the Honda E, but a decent small hybrid. This is the all new Captur RS Line e -Tech Hybrid from Renault. Please welcome David Coverdale. Hello, David. Hi, Leona. How are you, my love? Very good, thank you. And how are you? Uh, you can hear yourself be okay? I can hear you loud and clear. All is good this All end. good. I've got bluebirds flying out of every orifice. Every day is a miracle. <laughs> and uh, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be who I am at this time in my life, surprisingly. I just want to tell you something. Um, the first gig I ever went to was the 31st of December, New Year's Eve, 1987, and it was ah. White Snake at Wembley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was memorable, absolutely memorable. Well, they all are. It's amazingly emotional when you uh, the White Snake and the White Snake Choir. And you did your famous line, "Is a song for ya." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you say it now, please, uh, please? Is a song for ya. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Usually about thirty decibels louder. When uh, when I was working with Cozy, uh, he used to have God rest his soul. He used to have these giant monitors behind his um, drums, really deafening and stuff and of course we'd only ever rehearse together and stuff so when i walk up the microphone and scream are you ready <laughs> it knocked him off his drum stool <laughs> he said dear god that's the loudest thing i've ever heard in my life and that was cozy powell you well know? yeah but uh yeah it's uh certain things have just stuck from live albums that uh you know i don't go on there with a script or anything um uh, I, I saw that with a lot of american bands i've worked with and i'm going i, I can't do that i just chat you know at times like I, when i'm playing manchester or birmingham or whatever it's like i'm doing stand-up half the time with the crowd it's yeah we know each other so well for you know we're three four generations deep now you know people who my age who followed me since deep purple yes um and thankfully it's amazing to look into our crowd uh to have the energy of white snake you know inspiring me behind me and the incredible white snake choir in front it's impossible not for it to be an emotional uh, uh inspiration uh and now i think with this awareness as obviously it's called the farewell tour it's it's actually me saying farewell to touring at this level not farewell to making music or white snake records okay um but you know it's I, I was supposed to do this of course last year we all know what happened there and i thought 69 was the entirely appropriate age for the singer of white snake to step down <laughs> so there you go uh, so you've got to tour kicking off in 2022 in the UK? Yes, I start off in Ireland, in Dublin's first city. Uh, and that's, I think it's around either May 10th or May 5th, one of those things. Um, and it's just so exciting because I know with the bond that we have, uh, it's going to be 
highly emotional, certainly for me. Uh, but it's really part of, of me achieving completion is to do a thank you to her, you know, appreciation and gratitude for the incredible support I've received for 50 years. I couldn't do it without the audience supporting me. That's it. You yeah. Know? There's so many bands that say this is the fa- final tour and then they come back again. Is this really, really it? Well, yeah, I'm 70 years old. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're not going to be taking me out in a wheelchair, mate. <laughs> okay, all right. We believe you. We believe you. Um, well, yeah, I know. I've seen it. It was like, the, well, the 20th year of the farewell tour. No, no, I swear. You know, good luck to them, but that's not me. Right. Okay. Now, White Snake um, are also revisiting Restless Hearts. Can you tell yes. us about that? Well, it's it's part of what we, my co-producer Michael and I called uh, the Legacy Series. Um, it's it's coming up to you know the twilight of one's career. Uh, so all the work that I own from uh, the 1984 slide it in through until today, um, I, they're all like time capsules, Leona. Yes, we always use the uh, the best uh, quality tech uh, technology at that time or whatever. But you listen to digital hi-fi now, digital audio. It's like, oh my god! And I can only remaster to a certain point. So uh, this is my most played remix out of what we've done so far. And this is out now um, with all kinds of different formats and extras, and and, and that's available now to buy. Yeah. Yes, okay. it's on, on wire too. <laughs> you can listen to it on the cat's whiskers if you're old enough. <laughs> um, can I go back a little bit further? Um, sure. Can I go back to Deep Purple days? Oh, my God. I don't know. I'm 70 years old. I don't have the best memory. The mental, <laughs> old mental Rolodex is conveniently wiped clean. No, let's see what you got. It's just, just a simple question, really. I just want yeah. to know, what was it like joining Deep Purple? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know. If you talk about bluebirds flying out of every orifice, that was probably the first time that I experienced that feeling. <laughs> um and I, I tell you, I'm I'm eternally grateful to those guys, to uh, Richie, John, uh, Glenn, and Ian, for given an unknown, really untried and untested. I'd never been in a proper recording studio. I'd never played in more than a pub audience, uh, and these guys took me under the wing, uh, and I got the gig for my my twenty first birthday. You so know, young. Just... Yeah, I mean, I I see twenty one year olds now, and I'm going, my God, was that me? Yeah, you know, but these were Richie was a great mentor to me. Uh, we wrote most of the music together. Uh, John was a fantastic mentor, uh, a bon vivant raconteur, uh, j- just one of the good guys, you know, with story. Paige is another one. I've I've had the blessing of working with some amazing musicians who are just great storytellers and have great stories to tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So for the initially, I mean, they put me to work immediately. I was Richie's house working on all of the demos that he'd had since they'd uh, split up Mark II. Um, and uh, I was taking home cassettes, guard them with your life. Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> you know, going back up to Red Car um, and, uh, and fleshing out, uh, mu- you know, guitar riffs and making songs out of them. And, and I swear to God, it was just an, ex- an incredibly, almost indescribable experience. But it, what it did was give me this Willy Wonka's golden ticket to open the door to this in- yellow brick road, for God's sake. Yeah. That I've, I've, I'm still, still on. And that's all down to the opportunity I was given, uh, back then. That's the, you know, that was the beginning of my, a magical journey. Yeah, so you were in your early 20s then, and I was, yeah. um, you know, what I, we used to no, watch. You weren't born. No. <laughs> but we, <laughs> but we, when I was a teenager, we used to watch uh, California Jam on videotape, oh. this amazing gig that you did. Um, yeah. And we watched I was that. 22. You were 22, 22 for that, All right? Yeah, we we watched that so many times. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, part of my sort of teenage years of watching that. 
He's a um, little bit of insight to you. When you watch it next time, I've got a check for a million dollars in my ass pocket <laughs> because it was so busy backstage. Warner Brothers and Warner Reprise had given us an advance and everybody was worried. Oh, my God, what if it's stolen? So, you know, stick it in David's ass. He's going to be on camera. So you literally well, not his ass, his ass pocket. <laughs> I wow. should have done a runner then straight for the border. Yeah. So that was in your back pocket. I'm going to rewatch it now. That's incredible. <laughs> a million dollar singer. And then just moving on into the 80s, um, because uh, we have... I'm, radio- I'm not 80, I'm 70. I'm not going there yet. Go on, <laughs> okay, the 1980s. Yeah, so I want to know, because obviously that was a real peak era for you with the album oh 1987 God. and everything. Um, what was it, it like for you? It started with the... I'd taken, got and bought my way out of the management contract. And the first album I made, uh, I got a deal with Geffen. Uh, and then, of course, radio in America just loved the record. And so that was the foundation of what became... Uh, the 87 album and the enormous success because the different uh, element that, that came into play in that time after 84, the slide it in, was MTV, of course, yeah. which then became global. And as they became global, so did Whitesnake in yeah. an enormous way. It, was, it wasn't it was part of a master plan. It just unfolded. It, it was that magic. And I had, you know, the awareness, the focus and the know-how how to uh, to deal with all that because I'd had incredible, almost Beatlesque success with Deep Purple. You know, in 73, 74, I think it was 74, 75, we were the biggest selling band in the world. Yes. I mean, that's I've sadly in two divorces lost that plaque, which I'd love to have because that oh. was from Billboard was pretty special. Yeah, so I mean, it's just an incredible era, really, and and for me again, just the memories of that album, nineteen eighty seven, uh, is just really part of my yeah, sort yeah, of growing yeah. up experience. And oh, I had- may I ask? Uh, yes, it's, it's very ungentlemanly of me. May I ask how, uh, your uh, proximity of your age? Well, in nineteen eighty seven, when the album came out, I was sixteen. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so we, we you know we used to watch all the videos and and just listen to that album nonstop in the car. And of course, yeah, I was learning yeah, to yeah. drive and yes, um, good driving record actually it is a fantastic especially still yeah. of the night love that one in yeah, the car yeah. um so but but for you personally in the 80s i mean such a such an exciting era and i do actually want to come on to cars in a minute um, but first of all just going back to the album 1987 yes. um now so many different versions of that song which version of here i go again do you prefer oh oh the the well number one uh, john sykes and i had written more than enough uh, material for a full album the year the, probably the album you were listening to didn't have Hero Go Again on. EMI was incredibly slow uh, to catch up to to the insane success we were having in uh, the US. I mean, we sold in one morning, I don't know if we still have the record, like 370,000 records between 9.30 and noon, which was like unheard of. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was that big, fueled by incessant radio play. And of course, this magical commodity of, of Still of the Night on MTV blew people's minds. It was like almost seven minutes long. We, I refused to allow it to be edited. Uh, and it just, we, they were getting, showing it 18 times a day. It was extraordinary. I think it was called Hip Clip of the Week, you know? Yeah. And then Geffen said, oh, this will be the second Geffen album. We want you to re-record Here I Go Again. And I'm going, no, we don't do that, you know? Yeah. And they go, well, we want that. And it was a sin John wasn't impressed, you know, but we, we knew it was a big song already in, in the audience and with a crowd. So I said, well, if we're going to do that, I want to do Crying in the Rain because I was never happy with the original on Saints and Sinners. So John was, of course, very into that, but not into the idea of Hero Go Again. And of course, God, and that didn't even want to do Is This Love. That was for Tina Turner. But the guys I was working with at uh, Geffen were pretty firm in their insistence. We want this. And thank Thank God, because it changed the world for me. Yeah, because I always thought that the English version was watered down because uh, the charts were quite poppy and not rocky then. And then the Americans had the more rockier version. Am I right in saying that? We redid David Geffen, um, very powerful man in the industry uh, at that time, owned Geffen Records. He asked me to do a more FM friendly. We did this more, I don't know, journey style. It's almost sticks in my throat. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, uh, and thankfully, radio just fucking ignored it. So. <laughs> It's like a collector's item now, you know. Well, for the record, my favourite version is the one off the 1987 album. So that's my favourite. And Um, it's a sweet, memorable, you know, uh, video. um, You mentioned cars earlier on. Uh, Can I ask, uh, are you into your cars? What sort of car do you drive? Let's see, what have we got? We've got a BMW M4, Porsche uh, Cayenne Turbo. Um, I have an old man executive, what is it, a Lexus? 500? Five, uh, 520, I think. Something. It's a customized, beautiful, uh, sleek um, sedan, as it were. Yes. Um, and we have a, a Jeep for the for the studio, which my son borrows when he comes up, which is this week. I'm very excited. He's coming home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a like a collector or anything. I just like nice cars. Just happen know? to have a little collection. <laughs> yeah, a modest one, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what car did you drive in the 80s? Oh, it was the White Jag. We still have it. Oh, fantastic. Um, so uh, I, I didn't pass my driving test till I was 35. Oh. I'd always, you know, uh, I'd always had um, people driving me, God bless them, either security guys or... Uh, and uh, um, But when I moved to, uh, to L.A. Uh, in the middle 80s, I'm going, oh, my God, I, I'm either going to have to go get limousines every day or n- nobody I know takes taxis in L.A. <laughs> I took five driving lessons, passed my test, immediately got a 450 SL, and I'm s- racing people at stoplights. I'm going, I'm going to kill somebody here. I said, I, w- I called the officer, I said, I need something, something I'm not going to be stupid in. Anyway, yeah. the Jag's pretty stupid. Uh, they took me to Horn in Beverly Hills and I got the infamous white jag um, and we recently got her out of mothballs to feature in uh, a video called Shut Up and Kiss Me, which, you know, lit up uh, the internet because the car looks as sexy as ever. And uh, so you've got the tour coming up as well. And do, do you like being out on the road? Well, it's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing are shows. I wish they could do the Star Trek thing where beam me up to uh, the O2. You know, yeah. I'd love that. But I travel extraordinarily comfortably. But I am 70 years old. So I recently drove, we just bought a beach house down in Malibu and I drove down and my ass wouldn't speak to me for like 36 <laughs> hours. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, I want to retire uh, from this style of performing, uh, this style of touring uh, and be respectful to my fans and to myself uh, to, uh, to do the best I can. Well, well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been really oh great love. to chat. I have some sushi now, if that's all right. I will let Leona, you get back to your sushi. I adore you. Stay safe and well, and have a super Christmas to you and your listeners. And to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, big news about Motorcycle Live, which is back. Of course, they couldn't have it last year, so it's so good that it is back. And it's Motorcycle Live at the NEC Birmingham from the 4th to the 12th of December. And I'm going to be there in the Honda section. I'm going to be filming some bits for the Honda Engine Room, who, of course, sponsor the podcast sometimes. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'd love to meet you. Come on down to the Birmingham NEC. I'll be there on the 4th and the 5th of December, the opening weekend. All right, but you can win win tickets on this podcast right now. So I've got four pairs of tickets to give away. If you would like to win a pair of tickets, this is what I want you to do. Go on Twitter and retweet my tweet about this competition. You will find it at Rock and Road Pod. Also, it's on Instagram. If you could share that story at Rock and Road Pod, that would also get you into the draw. And then I will pick four winners at random from those retweets and reposts. Motorcycle Live, beginning 4th of December at the NEC Birmingham. It's going to be awesome. And in fact, my next episode is going to be all about Motorcycle Live, where I'll tell you what it's about. We'll speak to the organiser himself, Finlay McCallan, and I'll speak to Honda about what I'll be doing at the event as well. Can't wait. Motorcycle Live Special Edition next week. Now, talking of motorbikes... The MCN Minute on the Rock and Road Podcast. Please welcome to the podcast, Emma Franklin, Deputy Editor of MCM Motorcycle News, the weekly paper. Hi, Emma. How are you? 
Oh, I'm really well, Leona. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. What have you been up to? Oh, man. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a busy time on MCN because all the new bikes have been revealed. So, yeah, it's a new bike central at the moment. So, yeah, we've been uh, getting really excited about all the new metal that's been heading our way. So, love it. Good time. So what have you been trying out? Oh, uh, well, I was lucky enough to try out the Langan two-stroke last week, which is uh, sort of like a British-built um, special two-stroke. It's built up in Wigan. Um, so, yeah, that that was my, my own personal ride for the uh, for the month, really. For um, the month? Did you enjoy that? Month. Yeah, it was really weird. It's right up my street, that kind of bike. Some yeah. of a two-stroke nutter. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, everyone else, they've been out on launches. So a couple of the guys, they've been out on the Husqvarna North Norden 901, which is Husqvarna's new adventure bike. So it's sort of based on the KTM 890 adventure. So KTM and, well, they own Husqvarna basically. So it's a sort of like an offshoot. It's like they're a, a separate brand for them really, but it's essentially it's the same bike, but it looks, looks pretty cool. All right. What else have we got? So we've also got, well, Ducati have taken the wraps off their new Street Fighter V2, which is very identical to the big uh, Street Fighter V4. But this one is using the 955cc uh, V-twin engine. Uh, so it, it's got less power. It's, it's only 155 horsepower rather than the V4's 205. And it costs a bit less as well. So it's about £15,000, but arguably... It's probably a more usable bike because the Street Fighter V4 is a bit of a monster. It is a proper handful. It's great. It's amazing. But this will be arguably a nicer road bike and a lot easier to manage. But in terms of looks, both bikes look pretty pretty identical. So that's a good, exciting thing that we've got this, this week. Okay. And is this the paper that's coming out... Because I've got one here. This is the one that's the headline, uh, Grazy Vale. Grazy Vale. Hey, Grassy Rossi. <laughs> yeah, the hey. Rossi special. Yeah, it's Rossi special. Oh, who can believe it? So last weekend, yeah, we the day, the day we thought would never come, but we knew was about to come, actually happened. So it was Rossi's last Grand Prix at Valencia. So it was a bit of an emotional um, outpouring over there in uh, Spain from all the riders just celebrating this great this great man's career, basically, and got a 32-page uh, pull-out collector's edition special. Yeah, it does look really good. It says 46 steps to becoming the goat. Yeah, that's right. Which is yeah, great, so. great line like that. <laughs> um, yeah, the papers, uh, I've been browsing it this week. It's very good. And the reason I've been uh, brushing up on my motorcycle reading is because I'm going to MCL, um, Motorcycle Live. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Are you going? Oh, definitely. Yeah, probably on the first uh, Friday, I think. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm going on the first Saturday and Sunday um, and I'm going up there with Honda. So are you going to be doing anything in the paper for it? So yeah, MCN will probably be covering, we'll probably do a little bit of a show uh, review after the event and our web team will be there. So the next episode of the podcast will be a bit more Motorcycle Live based. So hopefully I'll catch up with you next time and we'll talk about that. Cool. Yeah. See you then. All right. See you then. Bye. Bye. The MCN Minute on the Rock and Road Podcast. Buy the latest issue in store and online at MotorcycleNews.com. So that is it from the podcast this week. And as I mentioned several times, um, the next episode is going to be about Motorcycle Live. I'm very excited about it. Um, Dexter, you went to Motorcycle Live. Do you remember? No. No, it was 2018. So how many years ago is that? Let's do some maths. We're in 2021. Three years ago, you're eight years old. You were five. Uh, You just forgot what about tennis today and I had to remember and you literally forgot it yeah I did I forgot all about Com- tennis tonight completely so there's no chance of me, me remembering something three years ago is there but I'm saying can you remember it mm, maybe a little bit there was motorbikes there was motorbikes <laughs> <laughs> that is a clue yes <laughs> um, so Dexter what do you think of the Renault this week by the way it's good but uh, it's funny but I like it why is it funny? Because it is. But what's funny about it? Because there's we used to rent a car that looked completely the same. Yes. Yeah, I know. It does look a bit like that Dacia Duster, the colour. It's all coloured and it's the same, but one thing's weird. One thing's not the same because it has no heated seats. I know. You've, got, you've been spoiled with these heated seats in the back. Right, off you go to school. Bye. Bye. 
So anyway, yeah, I'm back next time with another edition and please do follow me on the socials at Rock and Road Pod. Uh, please like, rate and review wherever possible uh, because the podcast only survives if I get, you know, ratings and likes and that's what it's all about these days, unfortunately. So please, please do, if you're enjoying it, like it. If you're not enjoying it, you don't have to participate in that bit. I'll let you off. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you.